Hi everyone, thank you for coming to my talk. Today we'll be talking about how we are merging Excel and physical therapy to enhance patient care. I'm Veena, the CEO of Neuro Rehab VR. So first, let's start with the definition of what, of what serious gaming is. As you see, serious gamings are games whose primary objective is not fun or entertainment, rather learning or practicing the skill and can be used in sectors such as education, defense, aeronautics, science, and also healthcare. We will quickly go into some use cases of serious gaming in uh, the healthcare industry because that's what I will be talking about today and more specifically for physical therapy and occupational therapy. So right now, there are many applications of serious gaming in the hospital industry for PTSD and also for pain for kids. In the first picture, you will see that residents in a hospital are learning about the anatomy of the human body using AR. In the second picture, soldiers are working through their post-traumatic stress disorder using a virtual reality system where uh, the battlefield is recreated and they can go through that process and there's a therapy called exposure therapy and as you get exposed to these sounds and uh, visions of what you saw in the battlefield you do you do get desensitized to it and that's where PTSD VR therapy comes from and then in the third picture you will see a kid who is distracted from the pain and also the anxiety of getting shots through VR but now we'll jump into what we do at Neuro Rehab VR, that is work with uh, patients who've had stroke, brain injuries, and more with physical therapy. Each year, millions of Americans need physical therapy after they suffer a neurological incident or a musculoskeletal injury, and Joe here is one of them. His stroke left him paralyzed on one side, and he cannot really move his fingers. But there is hope for Joe and millions of others and he really wants to get better. So the concept of neuroplasticity suggests that your brain does have the ability to recover from a stroke. That is, the healthy parts of your brain can take over the functionality of the damaged areas, but it requires extensive physical therapy and cognitive training. So Joe, he really wants to get better, but physical therapy hasn't really changed since the 60s. It is very expensive for patients and for the caretakers. Clinics are usually far and apart, so transportation is a problem, and only 30% of patients actually attend all of their therapy sessions. And on most days, Joe uh, is either too depressed or in pain to go to an appointment, and when he does make it to the clinic, he finds therapy tedious and does not want to do it. And because of COVID, there has been a bigger impact with clinics shutting down and patients not being able to access the care that they really need. Moreover, there are only about 24 physical therapists per 100,000 Americans, but the number of people turning 65 and older every day is growing faster than the U.S. population. So there is a real need for physical therapists or, or, and a need for making the physical therapy now the training more efficient and better than it was previously. And that is where we come in. We develop virtual reality applications leveraging the concepts of neuroplasticity. We provide evidence-based, fun, engaging, and motivating therapy exercises. And our company is located inside a neuro clinic, so we have access to physical therapists and patients every day who provide us with constant feedback, and we're able to iterate our applications depending on how they're doing. So as we started to work with these patients, we realized that each of them had a whole range of functional abilities that varied vastly from people with a stroke to brain injury to Parkinson's to MS. So we created a whole suite of exercises from upper extremity training, lower extremity training, balance, stress and anxiety, as well as cognitive skills. So when a patient comes into a clinic now, are able to use one of our applications to help them with their functional tasks. So we're now able to provide a turnkey solution for a clinic to work with the whole of their patient population. And now coming back to why, how we are changing things using gaming in virtual reality. Uh, it's one, VR is fun, it's engaging and functional at the same time. Our patients are transported to the space, to beach, or even the grocery store. And with the gamified exercises, they're able to see, feel, and also hear sound that truly immerses the patients in the environment, and they feel like they're transported to a new place than being in a drab PD clinic. 
and we have seen patients do more when they uh, than they thought they could ever could because they forget the bias of their diagnosis and their inhib inhibitions and inabilities and also their anxiety and focus on the task at hand and they're so immersed in the functional task and the game that they're working on. And we've seen just within five minutes of working with them, we've seen how patients who have been stuck for years and years on their physical therapy progress make new uh, progress in those five minutes. It also brings out the competitiveness in most of our patients, just like when a game board as you're going through different levels. So we have seen uh, patients come back and try to beat their previous scores and also be competitive with other patients. I have a quick uh, story about one of our patients who had a, a TBI injury and uh, was working on hand flexion and extension and learning how to pick items up from a grocery store. He was so motivated that he breezed through some of our, some of the levels that we had created for him. And then we had to go back in and add more levels because he was so motivated as to getting from level one to level two to level three that he beat the whole game and we uh, had to build more for them. So we love when that happens because we can see that progress in that patient, which the therapists were not able to see previously without using gaming as part of their therapy sessions. And the other part that virtual reality and gaming really helps for in therapy is distraction, pain, stress, and anxiety. A lot of patients that do come to our clinic are have anxiety, or are either depressed, and uh, are not have pain in their shoulders, in their hip, and are and it's very hard for them to get through their physical therapy sessions and for the one hour, one or two hours that they're at the clinic. But with virtual reality and the distraction of the game itself, they are so focused on their task that they are distracted from the pain. And there is a lot of research out there that shows that VR really reduces pain by more than 25% in patients. And one of the other important things that we really work on is transfer of skills. So all the patients that come to our clinics and are using our system, one of their biggest goals is to be able to do normal everyday living tasks like grocery shopping, like cooking, uh, going to the store. And we are very invested in making sure that they're able to do these tasks and lead to their independence. So we have seen that people embody their virtual avatars as their own in the VR world. There's lots of research out there that the virtual avatars that they see uh, it feels like it's their own and using that virtualness of VR to our advantage, we're able to transfer those skills and the functional tasks that they do in the virtual world to the real world. So we have had patients come back and tell us for the first time they were able to pick up items from the grocery store and actually go, go to the grocery store and feel like they will do complete the task after their stroke injury or a traumatic brain injury. Now we have a quick video about how we have able to help this patient go through that exact same thing, work on their dynamic standing balance, functional reaching to help them pick up items. So we have Virginia here um, participating in VR on the OmniStand. So what's really cool about incorporating, incorporating both of these things together. In the OmniStand, I can control um, how far she is anteriorly, posteriorly, or laterally displaced. So it's challenging her dynamic standing balance while at the same time working on her functional reach with incorporation of the VR. Um, so we're able to take her to the side, have her reach forward, have her reach backwards in all different planes um, to challenge that. So it can correlate later on in the community when she's actually at the grocery store. What's also good is that we've noticed her tremors in her right hand have significantly decreased as well um, with using this gaming on VR. So it's been really helpful. Um, implementing this in her treatment planning as well. Good job, Virginia. Hold, hold, you had it right there, right there. Good, back in the cart. Nice. Hold it, there it is. All right, looks like the bottled water's next. Find it on the shelf. Good, Virginia, reach a little further. There it is, hold it right there, hold it. Nice. Back in the cart it goes. Good job. Good. Pringles, last thing. You still have 45 seconds, so you're doing good on time.
you'll see in that video how that patient was challenged on her standing balance, her reaching, and also uh, PT uh, exercises that physical therapists usually would work with, but with the addition of functional tasks of actually picking up items from the, from the aisle and putting it on the card. These are some things that you cannot do if you do not have virtual reality or gaming. So it really helps with connecting the functional task to the exercises that they're working on. And as I mentioned before, we always use the neuroplastic principles in anything that we build. So there are about 11 neuroplastic principles and employing six or more of these principles increases outcomes for patients according to uh, research uh, papers out there. So we'll dive into how we leverage neuroplasticity uh, principles while designing our virtual reality scenarios to help our patients achieve their functional goals. The first ones are, as you see, duration-based principles, which are related to mass practice, dosage, and structured practice. All of this have something in common, that is the duration of the session. Matched practice refers to solely to one long session the patient has put into with any lit any little breaks, and while structured practice refers to breaks in between the therapy sessions. Dosage is the amount of time a patient is there partaking in the therapy, such as three times a week or four times a week. Regarding dosage and practice, with a simple setup of VR, a patient can get a session within the clinic, at home, or a one long sessions, or multiple sessions across the span of the week. So there is really no limit on how we can uh, change these dosages up. And with virtual reality and gaming, we, uh, the therapists have full customization depending on the patient's needs for their mass practice, dosage, and structured practice. So they're able to get to the most benefit that the patient can. Going to our next uh, set of principles, their practice-based principles. That is, use of affected limb is really important, especially for stroke patients who have an affected limb, and most of the time they do end up using the limb that is not affected. So one of the things that PDs work on is making sure that the patient exercises and uses their affected limb, and what we can do in VR is make sure that there are grocery items only on one side of the aisle and give them only one controller to work on so they're really uh, working on their affected limbs. And task-specific practice, just like how we saw one of our patients pick up items in a grocery store, it is very important to have that task specificity so that patients are connecting the mind and the body to the functional task versus just uh, stretching their hand or flexing their hand. And variable practice is really important, where uh, you're working on repetitions of that affected limb and increasing the difficulty with that variability so that you're not on that same plateau of things that you're doing. With virtual reality, it's really easy to give that variability to the patients by increasing or decreasing the level and the difficulty levels of for that patient. So they're always challenged and they're working on the affected limb. And we also leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning to make to so that the, our, our applications automatically adapt to that patient's need and their ability. Our next set of principles are stimulation and feedback principles. Uh, everything related to uh, feedback and stimulation and avatar representations, which are again very important principles for neuroplasticity. Multisensory and avatar representations refer to the touch haptic feedback from the remotes hearing as well as seeing the, their bodies and limbs being represented in the virtual space. Explicit feedback can be restated simply as knowledge of the results. So we have seen that when patients are presented with the knowledge of the results after each session, they're able to see how they did compared to their previous sessions. Uh, so that really tells them of the progress that they're making. And implicit feedback is based upon the patient's execution of that movement, which could be given audibly or uh, through physical uh, playback of the video or uh, noises in inside the virtual en environment or therapist cues. This is more about real-time feedback that the patient is receiving during that therapy session. So we're able to employ all of these principles and build applications such that we are taking in at least six to seven of these neuroplastics principles in each of the application that we build so that the patient is uh, is able to receive the most outcomes during that therapy. Here's another quick So Deidre's here video. working on the game Foul Play. Um, what we're trying to accomplish her with this game is her sequencing and purposeful coordination of her movements 
Um, we're also work working on her dynamic standing balance, her weight shifting abilities, um, range of motion throughout her legs, as well as um, improving trunk mobility. Oh. Um, lots of good things going on with this game for her. Ooh. That is one of our uh, very popular applications for uh, exercising. The therapists love it because they're not able to get lateral movement from the patient, especially for stroke patients, and also increase that intensity of training as the patient is working on the therapy task to increase it to such that they're able to push their limits and lead to better outcomes. And that's exactly what happened with one of these patients who was diagnosed with spinal cerebral disorder. Before VR integration, she could ambulate for about 30 feet with an assistive device and had less than 30 seconds of standing balance. And one of our goals was to unscrew five screws in five minutes. And this is a patient who's been going to therapy since 1990 and has been to many, many different clinics, but has plateaued in her therapy. But as soon as we added VR into her gaming and VR into her therapy sessions, uh, within a few months, we were able to see she was able to ambulate 210 feet. and. Her standing balance increased to two minutes, 30 seconds, which is a significant increase from the 30 seconds she was able to do previously for most of her life. And she reached the goal about unscrewing five screws in less than five minutes. So this all leads to why we started to work on these uh, gaming for gaming for physical therapy, and we have a product called the XR Therapy System. It is a registered uh, FDA registered medical device, and has a very convenient form factor that can be utilized in both inpatient and outpatient settings. So patients can use it in their home, in on the bed, in the gym, and any uh, at at their home too. The gamified therapy is highly engaging for the patient and provides a new therapy modality for the physical therapist to use and make their job more creative and better and engaging for the patients. There's also more than 30 years worth of research that states VR is highly effective for physical therapy and the therapy itself is reimbursed by insurance. Now going back to Joe, our first patient, you can see that he now he's more engaged and motivated during his therapy. With our data analytic system, he's able to precisely track his progress along with his therapist, and he has seen his increase in range of motion by more than 25%. He's also able to hold his balance better and improve his muscle coordination and decrease sway back, and so that way he's able to balance himself better. He's also having so much fun in virtual reality that his cardio is getting better since he's staying in therapy for longer periods of time. And all of this is leading to a more functional, independent, and a happier life for him. Here are a few quick testimonials from some of our patients. I would like to uh, go with one of them, which is one of our patients who had a spinal cord injury. Uh, he's about a 35-year-old 30, patient, so a young patient, and his goal, goal was to be independent in his life. So he worked on a grocery shopping applications, and he learned how to uh, exercise to bend, reach, select items, and put them in a proper place. And one day, he came back to me and said that for the first time in his life, he was able to pick up items from his pantry, pick up items from his refrigerator on his own, and put them back. And making him independent in that task. So we love to hear stories like that from our patients on how our virtual reality applications have, you know, changed their lives. So thank you for coming to this talk. And uh, at Neuro Rehab VR, we are hoping to digitize and cut costs and enable superior patient therapy so that our patients will be able to lead a happy and independent life. Thank you. Bye.